Hey folks, Steve here. How you doing? Got a trailer. Got a lot of stuff out. I'm just going to put this stuff away. After I get it all put away, I'll do a fly around, you know, just really quickly and show you more or less. I think there may be some miscellaneous details of, of some tools still not here, but get everything put back and I'll just show you what it looks like when it's all put back. It's been a while since I've done this, so I figured why not today because this is what I have out. So I'll grab the camera and I'll show you what I have out. For starter, I have this wheelbarrow full of just about everything, it seems, and it is because I am working on that addition right there and a few other rooms that are attached to that addition, and therefore it requires a lot of different tools. I've been doing plumbing, and by plumbing I mean PEX at this point. Uh, I was going to do copper, but I was convinced by a high-end contractor that PEX is okay to go. And then I have my electrical kit, I have a whole bunch of miscellaneous tools in that bag. A few PEX tools, and then just a few things to put away in there, out there, and so on and so forth. So this is me taking you along for the ride just to put back. I will most likely, during the editing process, speed it all up so you're not really watching me in real time do this. But I don't have a lot of time either because I am heading out of town tomorrow for, I think I'm gone for two weeks. I, in all the trip will last a month. I'm only on the first two week leg of it. But then I come back and continue working again. But for right now, I can get all the tools out of the way, get them all put back, inventory of them, etc. I'll check all batteries. As I put power tools away with batteries, I'll check all batteries and they'll go on the charger if they need to charge. And then later on tonight, I can just put them back on the tools. I do store my batteries on tools. I've had no problem with it. All right, what else? Oh. Yeah, I will say this, general comment. So kind of being like a one man show for the most part, uh, I have worked on crews before. I have owned my own company as far as been a half owner and then a third owner of a, a kind of a, a three part company. And you know, it's, it's, it's really nice being kind of a, a small show in that I get to do a lot of things. And so therefore my skill set means that I can do a lot of things. Now I'm not, I'm not master of everything, certainly, but I know what to do no matter what. So I can do electrical, I can do plumbing, I can hang your drywall, I can finish the drywall, I can trim, I can put in your flooring, I can put in your subflooring, I can frame it, I can pretty much do everything but masonry. I can tile it, you know, but I can't do, I'm not big on masonry like laying block for a foundation or, or anything like that. I can pour a, a pad, you know, that's that's not an issue, but as far as like foundation work. That's not what I do. And I don't like painting. <laughs> so if I don't have to paint, I don't. I can paint. I can paint well. I don't like to paint. And I can insulate. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's the whole ball of wax. So I have tools for that whole thing. So, you know, I, I have had uh, some people comment, hey, you know, Spence, why in the world do you carry everything like that? You know, you could get away with, you know, a pack out system in the back of your truck. Granted, yeah, if I just framed, if I just was a trim carpenter, if I just was a plumber, if I just was an electrician, I could have a van, right? If I just was fill in the blank, I could have a subset of tools and not have all this. But because I'm a general contractor and that I can do everything more or less from soup to nuts, right? That I kind of have to have tools to do all of that stuff. And I have to have the tools right there on the job site when they're needed, ready to go. Um, I had a crew just recently rely on me. Uh, I don't think it was intended to be that, but it was one of these things to where I was showing up with my trailer because honestly, I didn't want to think about the tools that I needed that day. Oh, we're going to be doing decking, but decking didn't mean just decking because there was four other things we had going on. And so for me, it was just easier to have the tools, have the fasteners because I have an amazing hardware, uh, hardware store in here, uh, that it was just amazing to, to be able to show up on the job. I got there first, so I showed up early every day and was able to back in and, and kind of first in, last out. But... I was first in so I could get off to the side and have the trailer there and not be in anybody else's way but have my own stuff without exception I had my own stuff and at that point I had the trailer really packed out this stuff that I just showed you all of that stuff down in there I think if you can see it all of that stuff was you know in the past three days I needed all of this to go back in there uh, and, and work on my thing. And so now it's time to, to get it all put away. All right, so that's what I'm doing today. Thank you very much for sticking with me on, on this kind of an explanation and just saying, hey, you know, cool to be kind of an, an, a jack of all trades maybe uh, and to know most trades at least. So let's put it away.
found these things. These are, it's like a 20 pack made in China. But these are extra nozzles for the great stuff cans because if you don't use a full can, it's hard to recover the nozzle you know, without a lot of solvents. So I found these on Amazon. And so now I have a whole bunch of extra tips for great stuff, uh, the, the expanding foam. And I have this largely empty container here where I have extra those kind of swizzle sticks for the precision spraying of like WD-40 and other solvents like that that I bought some extra ones online again. So, neato. will say, I love having uh, several extra chargers. Uh, I certainly have a bank of the ability right now to charge eight batteries at a time without plugging my radio in. And then I have three extra of these from various kits over the years. And so to have one, two, or three of these to take into a job site and just charge while you're in the job, rather than running out to the trailer, is uh, convenient. I will say it is convenient. My extra chargers simply live behind my double charger here. took my time putting things away. I uh, started to put uh, power tools away and forgot to forgot to check some batteries. So I had to go back and check a few batteries just to make sure. I got a couple on the charger because I have, I think, honestly, with 20 volt, two or three extra batteries, uh, you know, uh, d depending on what's on a tool, uh, maybe a, an extra two amp, an extra, uh, and probably one or two extra six amp hour batteries that I was able to just with limited tools, I was able to swap out. I have one two amp that needs to go back on a tool. I didn't have anything to swap out. So I'm doing pretty well with batteries. I would like to get a couple of more six amp, maybe another two amp in, and just know that I have extra batteries. Now, every tool in here pretty much has a battery on it. If it's 20 amp, if it's a uh, six or 20 volt, if it's a 60 volt tool, then not. I do not have enough 60 volt batteries yeah, I do not have enough 60 volt vets. <laughs> oh, tough to say. I do not have enough 60 volt batteries for the 60 volt tools that I have. And that's okay because those batteries are $250 for the ones that I am buying and they're just a volt. So I am very happy with how this went. Uh, I put everything back really, you know, like it should be. Put my drill kits back and, and rearranged a couple of things along the way. Everything has a place, everything in its place, but yet modular enough to where I can rearrange if I want to. So, you know, I, I don't have to have my saws right here. My saws could come down here. My drills don't have to live there. My drills can live back here. My nailers, etc. right? So there is some modularity to all this. Love the design. Again, thank you, Ron Polk, for all of this, uh, because I would never have figured this out. Never in a hundred years. So now it's time for the fly around. I will just do a quick fly around for you to show you the, the trailer kind of reset. And I think just about every tool is in here. Uh, with the exception of my daughter just retrieved my cordless vac. She's cleaning out her car, getting ready for that trip tomorrow. Uh, so other than the cordless vac, I think I have my tools here. Because I, I, I love tool, I, I love trailer videos, trailer tour videos, but 
when someone has a trailer tour video and half of their tools are missing. If it's just about how the, 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 or the, the, the physical organization is and not about like where the tools are, then of course it's very appropriate. But if they're just telling me, well, that would have been, and this would have been, and that, that tool would have been a, I would rather see the tools in there. But as a working contractor on multiple job sites, I get why your trailer is never 100% complete. So with all that being said, here's the fly around. It's just a quick fly around. I have a long 48 inch drawer. You see my level garage and I have a cubby there for sawhorses. And I have a vertical large tool garage because otherwise with the narrowness of this trailer I couldn't get my big tools out. So there are my two big tools. Corded both of them. Variety of grab and go hand tools all arranged there. Framing squares, speed squares, bevel tees. And the standard issue bank of tape measures because everybody needs them. I have up here, I have my tracks for my track saw, a couple of T-squares for drywall. Taking advantage of the other space up there, I have my miter box stand. Moving around, I have all of my PEX material and tools, and then I have the kind of the, the bulk, I guess you would call it, this is the bulk hardware store, and you can see that everything is nailed all the way down. And there you go. And I'll just pull one of these out to show you what I mean by bulk. So if I want to access it, I'll just pull that drawer out and I'll leave it hanging. It's strong enough to take the weight. And then what I mean by bulk is simply this Milwaukee organizer. And then I just fill up the trays with whatever. And in this case, these are all exterior screws, uh, small to big and a couple of different styles. As an example, I only need to lock that end because once it is in, then uh, this lid really can't come out. Also, behind some of these pack, or these are not pack outs, I'm sorry. Uh, behind some of these organizers, I do have a little bit of overflow. So I was filming this fly around after the uh, organization and my, the internal temp on my camera was too high and it shut itself off. So I'm just gonna finish up with my phone because I need to, I've got a lot of things yet to do today and I wanna wrap this up. All right, so back where we were. So as I was saying on these pack out, excuse me, as I was saying on these organizers, behind the organizer I do have the luxury of a little bit of extra space where I can store some small boxes of additional screws. So it's kind of like overflow. And I don't do that on every one of them, just when I have overflow. All right, so then over here is what I call the small tool garage. I have my Forster kit. I have, uh, that's one of my two laser levels, my radio. Behind all of that I have some drops and towels and plastic and so on and so forth. All things drywall here, pans, sanders, big knives, all of this. Then I have a few kits that I've put together, doors and windows, picture hanging kit, and that right there is for all of the uh, installation of trim and cabinets. The real, uh, the big thing that I'm so very, very pleased with is that hardware store. That's the one drawer I almost always open up to show off. And when I open it up and show it off, I'm just ever so pleased with this. Ever since seeing Ron when he opened up his hardware store and had all the Vutainer bottles uh, all organized with all the little bits of hardware, I thought, man, I got to get one of those. So this is how I have organized all mine. And predominantly, I was always wanting washers on a job site and never had washers. So now I have washers. I also have a battery of nuts of different sizes. And then all of this miscellaneous hardware here, you know, just anything and everything that I had more than one of that could fit in one of these four ounce jars that I that I bought from Amazon like 50 cents a piece or something like that all right then you can see everything else labeled up down here all the way down through to basically the bottom where I have uh, just air nails um, actually they're they're no longer air nails they are uh, nails for my cordless uh, framer and all of that stuff hand specialty tools and you see that I also have up here, around the corner, you can see this is all labeled. I have an additional hardware store and some chemicals and, and such like that. So if I go around that corner, this is what I am looking at. So I have all of these jars of additional hardware. These jars are larger, these are eight ounce jars. And so like wood screws, self-drilling screws, all of that kind of stuff. And it goes from six up to 10 or 12. I don't have every size but you get the idea.
Okay, so I have a nice hardware store. Then I have just boxes of things that I've never bothered to put in jars yet. And then I start to get into specialty and overflow where I had just boxes of stuff, boxes, and then eventually down there, chemicals and glues. All the extension cords that I have in the trailer are right there. Blower, two-step because I'm like four foot tall. Chemicals in one of those uh, narrow, what I call a butainer shelf uh, storage system, but I don't have any butainers. All of that is my plumbing. That's my grab-and-go plumbing box for new installs and repairs. And here, the, uh, it's up here at the nose of the uh, trailer, because I have the V-nose, uh, I have three, I don't know why I don't have four saw horses, but I have three saw horses and my table saw stand if I'm uh, remote. I have here my, elect <clears throat> there's my carpentry belt. Behind it is a seldom used electrical belt now and just an electrical grab and grow, grab and go kind of insert that goes into that Klein bag down there, which is my electrical bag. First aid, my spider drill kits, my Lennox plumbers kit, I guess. 100, 100 foot, 150 feet of air hose ready to go on a reel and that would go out of that hole in the floor. 100 foot 10-3 extension cord, which powers the trailer, which goes out of that floor and then pigtails into the trailer. While I'm down here, compressor lives right there. It never comes off the trailer. It lives on the trailer. And then I have a couple of those uh, kind of uh, mortar mixing tubs. Then I get to the cubbies. So before I get to the cubbies, you see just up in here, I have clamps, you know, any and all clamps that I have pretty much right up in there. There's the long track for my track saw. Extra clamps that work with my uh, Polk workbench. So in the cubbies, here I have a cordless framer, I have an air roofer, air palm nailer. Down here in the smaller cubbies, I have the 16 gauge, the 18 gauge, and the 23 gauge headless pin, cordless nailers, and I do have an air stapler. Back up for sanders, I have a corded, I guess it's a Makita, and that is a 4x24 belt sander. Down here I have the cordless palm and the orbital, and then behind there I have all the sandpapers and the, the punch out and everything else. And this empty bay here is where that cordless vac is. Cordless six and, a, uh, six and a half inch. Back there is a corded Ryobi that I have set up for masonry. Oh, reciprocator, reciprocator. Obviously hearing protection. Power planer, 60 volt worm drive. Power mixer back there. Uh, so that's a, a power mixing drill, 60 volt. Uh, SDS rotary hammer, big joist drill, kind of like a whole hog. Uh, that's my electrical staple, that's my cordless electrical staple stapler, and just a little extra storage. Here's that overflow battery stuff, here's my chargers and all. Down here, a couple of cordless, all oh, this is cordless, so flashlights, uh, driver drill, driver drill, driver drill, uh, impact wrench in a right angle drill behind there, and those are my two drywall uh, tools. That's my, uh, uh, it's not going to focus. Back in there is my, uh, back in there is the drywall router, and then that's my drywall gun waiting for its battery. 60 volt track saw, seven and a quarter inch, uh, 20 volt cordless, multi-tool. Man, that thing is, this. it's a lovely carpentry surgical tool. <laughs> Corded router, and behind it is a cordless router. Two cordless jigsaws, one set up with a Collins coping foot, one with a flat deck. 60 volt grinder, and then we're back to manuals to make me look smart and then all of that. You see down here in drawer bank one, it's labeled again, I'm not gonna open these drawers up. All the way over. Drawer bank two, uh, middle cabinet, you can see it's labeled all the way down. And then drawer bank one, well actually this is drawer bank two, this is just a different cabinet again. Kind of the prime real estate there with a whole lot of extra stuff, you know, just stuff. Not necessarily miscellaneous, but it's not stuff that I have to go to all the time. And then just pretty much everything else, my electrical drawer, everything drilled down here at the bottom. At the end, cleaning chemicals, some other stuff, first aid. That down there is a six foot drawer. And then down there, it's road, road forward, but I also have a six foot level. I have air on the back of my trailer, which I was using earlier to blow off tools. That outlet is always hot if it's if the trailer is plugged in, and then that light switch controls all of the lights. 
which are actually just plugged into basically a, uh, a switched receptacle. And then I just had that plug-in LED to light the countertop. On the countertop, lots and lots and lots of pencils, notebooks and such. A couple of extra, whoops, there we go. Extra markers, tweezers and such, some grab-and-go tools on magnets. And they do not fall off, by the way, glues and such up there. And also down here, you saw a lot of things on magnets. Again, they do not fall off. Battery charging station. I have three of the fast chargers and then a 113 and a 115 over there. Honestly, I couldn't tell you the difference between those two, other than one's right and one's left. I have a double charger there, as I said. I actually want to ha have a 112 plugged in all the way in the back there just because. And that, my friends, is the fly around with limited discussion. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. Putting things away, it's that easy, it's that efficient, and I am literally hooking up, ready to go. I've got everything with me, except for the cordless vac. <sighs> all right, hey, y'all take care. Thank you very much. <clears throat> hey, you all take care. Thank you very much for sticking with me. I hope you have a great one because I know you deserve it. And if you would, please like and subscribe. Y'all have a great day.